Here's how I transform an organization. I have four things. Number one, I transform the top team. I've got a set process. It's open to the world to have. I train people in it. It's, I've distilled the best of team building of the organization development field. I've t Bob Tannenbaum was my mentor. He was known as the spiritual leader of organization development. I asked 300 people at a conference once of 700, who's the spiritual leader of OD? Bob Tannenbaum. Okay, because he was the leader of teaching OD at UCLA. He wrote the first publication on team building. Okay, he's got, the books are all out there. He was the, he, he has the second or third most down, uh, the most printed article from the Harvard Business Review. It's when he started to discover that there, that the participative organization was better when people were important. It was that article. He laid out all the different kinds of management. And so, there's a process to do that. It takes two and a half days. You can't do it unless. Because the people have to sleep in their data twice, says Jack Gibbs, says Carl Young. Says Dr. Job now in New York, just discovered that again. It takes so many hours for some data to go from one side of the brain to the other. From, from the rational to the creative breakthrough. Number two, I then transform the critical mass of the group that they lead. Okay, so at the DNR 10 years ago, Transform the top team, and I took the next 300. Okay, and I hope to go back there now and at least transform the top team again. There'll be one person on that team that was still with me in the past that still remembers. Transformation is sustainable. They still have a committee there that I created, the transition team that's responsible for change in the organization. It stayed for the 10 years since I've been gone. They still are, have, are implementing a dream of putting trails and parks together that came up in my meeting 10, 15 years ago. Okay? That's sustainability. It took them this long before they get it together to do it, but they're still doing it. They're still after it. Okay. How I transform that next level is I get an outcome and a purpose from the top, I have them give me a diverse max mix group of 8 to 25 people. It represents the organization. I sit with them from 4 to 8 days. And we come up with a design with the most robust processes that I kind of give them to start with and we create new ones and different ones. Until we know in that room in consensus, everybody believes that transformation will happen. It'll be the most exciting, the most profound, the most honest, the most organization changing, individual changing that organization has ever had in its existence. And I don't give up until I get that, everybody says. So when we're doing the Department of Agriculture here in Minnesota, federal, you know, after four days, we thought we had it. In the elevator, some people say, no, I don't think we really have it. We had to come back and I had to work free for two more days to get it. So we get an interactive design where no one gets to give a lecture more than 20 minutes, even if it's the CEO or if it's the President of the United States coming to give a speech. Because a young generation today hasn't got an attention span over seven minutes. <laughs> okay? And when, when I started this, it was 20. So no one speaks, and then we have a dialogue between the CEO with the outside expert and the room. One little activity, the one that's used the most. Give the talk, 20 minutes, no PowerPoints, speak from the heart. Everybody in their groups, what did we hear her say? What? And what was my reaction to it? How did I feel about it? And this is what I believe about what she said. And then what questions do I have of her? 20 minutes, they have a discussion. This is an exciting discussion. Then we go around to the tables and say, what did you hear? What did you believe? And all of a sudden we start to get themes. 
They all start to believe, believe in the same stuff about it. And so now we're starting to get system intelligence, buy-in. And then they ask their questions. Not their question for an individual. The question that the, they think the room, the organization, the system, would most like to have an answer to. It's not about me. I'm modeling that. I have a third edition of Practice and Organization Development coming out this fall. The last line in the book was written by my friend Jane Watkins, who brought appreciative inquiry to the world with Dr. Cooper Ryder. And she says, see if I can get it right. In the postmodern world of organization development, it's not about me. It's not about the consultant. It's about the system. And so we bring all of the truth and the real truth surfaces. And that, when that happens, John Weir says, when the group discovers for the first time collectively that they have a new view of themselves, because man taught man just got a new view of themselves because they just heard this, it gets got truth serum from the people. Okay? And maybe the first time, large numbers of people have had a personal convert, uh, a communication with the top in this dialogue in the room. So they understand each other differently for the, diff than they ever had before, and they've generated a picture of where they are. Systems never like where they are. And they become motivated when we say, what's your vision of what you want to be? And when they see that, they get energy. And the spirit releases. And then, with that vision, they have action. Because as somebody said, I think it was Bar it was Barker, I just saw it this week. Or maybe it was Margaret Mead. Somebody said, you can't have action without vision. You can't have vision without action. So the third day of our experiences are always to create action from the dissatisfaction from the current state or the dream and the dream of the future. And we get committed action. It's right action because we've preferred with computers or whatever to distill thousands of ideas down to the best. And they're right. Management buys it. Because they saw that they, they were involved in the process. They aren't going to veto it. It's not like the old quality stuff that goes on, where they go and make their, their determinations, and they go to top management and ask for approval. And, you know, we recommend this to you. Can we do it? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Old, old dated stuff. So, that's how the critical mass moves. Now I'm going to talk about the third thing. In my last experiences, what occurs is the person or two that I'm working as internal change agents transform their life. They start taking this seriously. So in one case right now, a woman is going to the Gestalt Institute and getting retooled. Another one's going to Pepperdine and getting her master's. But they're all having deep soul searching experiences because they're getting the message they got to model it. And they're transforming their careers because they found a new methodology that they love. And this is what they want to do for the rest of their life. So I'll repeat it. The first one is transform the top team. Second is transform the critical mass that they lead. The third is work with the internal person. Coach them, teach them. I can't say transform them because I don't transform anybody. That uh, facilitates their personal transformation holistically. Okay? Number three is just simple, is to sustain transformation. And Dr. Um, I'm, I'm blocking his name, Bob Terry. He ran the Humphrey Institute here. Has a degree in divinity from Yale. 
and uh, really brought the spirit into everything that he did. And he was my number one keynote speaker for any of my large groups. The, the Pacific Power in out west called him uh, Santa Claus on Speed because he was so energetic and he, he was big and he had a big gray beard and so forth. What he says in his company that still goes, it's called the Authentic Wheel, Authentic Leadership, okay, is that action will sustain itself if there has been authentic leadership. By authentic, he means truth-telling. By it being real, addressing the real issues, by addressing the whole. So he's got a whole, it's his wheel, you know? You know, mission and power and, and vision and structure and existence. He can't say a philosophical word, right? Business doesn't get existence. Existence is the culture. It's the being of the organization. And so he says, that's how you get it sustained. So what happens is that my process automatically sustains itself. And I can leave. So right now at Woodbury, they just got a national award. Because I, start, I did the first whole system transformation uh, a session with them, with their fire, police, and emergency services. Oh, there was resistance. To what? The direct the, the uh, bill wanted to do because they wanted to integrate them for cost savings mm -hmm. and we've saved lives because when I was working there we had a fire who got to the fire first right the police you know they're they're more likely to be out and about and close mm -hmm. more of them there were people in the house the policeman couldn't go in and save their life. He's taught not to do that. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. They died. If he was now there, because he's been trained in emergency firefighting, he'd have gone in and saved their life. Because, the, you know, the firemen know what to do with the air and they do this, this funny little things. Mm -hmm. okay? Because they... The daughter who had gotten out next door saying, help, my mother and dad are in there. Couldn't do it. So that's, that's the dramatic point. But here, three years later, they've just gotten an award. The whole system transformation process is still going. I'm working with Dr. Fonstock. He was the person I trained. He's still working with him. It sustained itself. Most consulting gates stop when the consultant leaves. Because they didn't transform it into the being, the soul, the spirit, the life force of the organization. 